Let's talk about how to be employed in Norway as an electrician. Important message. This video is going to be useful for you only if you are educated as an electrical worker, have a trade certificate and at least one year of the experience. I encountered a poor and insufficient informational background regarding the process of getting approval to work as an electrician in Norway, both on forums and on YouTube. After I managed to find Norwegian authority issuing approvals for electrical thread workers, I got rejection, huge amount of mails, and finally this document, which allows me to work in Norway as electrical steelhead worker. My goal is to reveal some challenges I faced during my application process and to make application process a little bit easier for everyone. Let's begin. In Norway, electrician is a regulated profession. It means that despite your vocational, bachelor or even master degree, you need to apply for approval of your professional qualification from appropriate Norwegian authority. During your entire application process, you have to deal with the SB. It stands for Directorated for Samfunsikkerhet og Beredskap or the Directorate for Civil Protection and Emergency Planning. This and only this organization is going to evaluate your experience, education and of course it's going to issue your approval as electrical steelhead worker. Now let's take a closer look at the SB website. I'm going to type uh, the SB approval, enter, and it leads me to the following website. Spoiler alert, all links under the video. Before we are going to jump into this mess, I would like to begin with an important update. From January 1st, 2025, a fee of 3200 Norwegian crowns will be introduced for processing application for approval to practice regulated electrical professions in Norway. If an application is submitted to practice multiply professions, a fee of 2400 Norwegian crown per additional profession will apply. Now let's explore the website and go a little bit deeper in the application process. First of all, we must decide between two applicants groups. Applicants with professional qualifications from countries in the European Union or European Economic Area and applicants with professional qualifications from countries outside the European Union or European Economic Area. As I applied as applicant outside European Union or European Economic Area, I am going to focus only on this option. Once we are done with the applicant group, we'll need to move on and to choose between two work groups, electrical steel at worker and professional responsibility. Each work group contains a number of professions you're able to apply for. And you want to understand what are the difference between work groups. In order to make it clear, I sent an email to the DSB. And here's the answer. In a nutshell, the email contains definitions and requirements for each work group. You may find the attachment below the video. In a couple of minutes, I will explain you which professional group I choose and why. For now, let's assume that we have to choose profession within one of the work groups. Professional responsibility or electrical steelhead worker. The professional responsibility work group contains two professions. Professional responsibility for design of electrical installations and professional responsibility for design, installing and maintenance of electrical installations owned by others, electrical contractor. The electrical steel at worker work group contains 10 professions. Automation electrician, automation mechanic, electrician, electrical equipment repairer, power supply fitter electrician, power supply operator, lift electrician, power line electrician, repairer of electromedical device, and train electrician. When you are going to choose a profession, you have to keep something in mind. According to DSB, the applicant's education must be comparable to the Norwegian education. In other words, the duration and curriculum of your education 
must be more or less equal to Norwegian education. For example, the Norwegian education to the profession automation electrician is two years at secondary school plus two years and six months apprenticeship education plus completed and passed the final test to hold a trade certificate as automation electrician. This fact leads us to one more question. How can we be sure that your education is equivalent to Norwegian education? My personal advice is to use website Wibli.no. In order to find the curriculum, you first need to choose Electro Oak Data Technology and then select IRCAR, which stands for Professions. Here you can find a wide range of electrical professions. Uh, let's choose, for example, Electrical or Electrician. For a detailed description, click on the green section. The text highlighted in yellow indicates vocational education. The text highlighted in green indicates apprenticeship. This way you can compare your education with the Norwegian education system to understand how equivalent is it. Let's come back to the web page. Now, having considered the difference between work groups and my comments regarding education, we can move on to the next step. Before we proceed, I would like to mention which profession I have chosen. It is electrical equipment repairer within the electrical steel worker work group. Since my entire career has been focused on repairing electrical equipment, I decided to choose this particular profession. Let's talk a little bit about the required documents. After we clarified everything about the work groups, we have to familiarize ourselves with the documents we need to send to the DSB. There are two separate lists of the required documents for each work group. Most of the documents are the same for both of them. The following copies of the documents are mandatory for both work groups. CV, valid passport, school report or diploma, references from current or former employers as proof of at least one year practical experience. Only the skilled worker work group requires the following additionally. Certificate of completed apprenticeship contract. And only the professional responsibility is required as well. Approval, permission, authorization or other attestation of competence to perform the profession in question. Please pay special attention to the references from employer section. As per DSB requirements, references should include the following information. The title of the position, description of work tasks, period of employment from date to date, date on the certificate or confirmation, signature from employer, payroll office or HR, company logo, heading or stamp, letterhead. After we understood the differences between applicants groups and award groups, after we familiarized ourselves with the list of professions and required documents, we are ready to create a personal DSB account and upload all the documents. To get it done, you will need to click here or follow the link below the video. All you need to register an account is your email address. Afterwards, you will need to create an application and upload all the documents I just explained it. I can make a separate video about this by account. Let me know in the comments if you need it. At the end of this video, I'd like to answer some questions you might have. What is the case processing time? How long do you have to wait to get your approval? The application is processed no longer than 4 months after the DSB has received it the complete application. Do I need to translate the original documents? If the original documents are in other language than English, Swedish or Danish, it must be translated primarily into English, secondarily into Norwegian. All documentation must be translated by an approved translator. What format should be the attached documents be in? All attachments must be in PDF format. Other formats or links to the documents will not be read. I made a mistake in my application. Let's say you attach a document, but it's missing some important information. 
However, you have already submitted your application and forwarded it to DESBE. Most likely you will receive the following notification. Mr. Smith, the attached document is missing the following information. Please send it to us by the 21st of August. Therefore, you will receive a notification and a deadline. Can I contact DSB if I have any questions? You may use the following email address in order to clarify some information. Just remember about this. Practical experience in profession must be from another country, outside Norway. Last but not least, always remember you need at least one year practical experience. This is the end of the video, and I hope it's the start of your path to getting approved as an electrical professional in Norway. Uh, to be honest, to be honest, it was not so easy to make this video. I use a script which I prepared uh, myself, but now I don't want to use it, so now no script. All I wanted to say is thank you for your attention, and uh, I don't want to ask you to like this video or to subscribe the channel. It does not matter now. I hope this video was useful for you and I hope it was useful for everyone who is looking for information on how to be employed in Norway as an electrician. Uh, shortly about myself, yes, I am living and working now in Norway as an electrician. Uh, I think I have something to show you and I think I have something to tell you. So, sooner or later you are going to meet me here again on the channel. Uh, so far, thank you one more time for your attention and I hope to see you soon.